Welcome back to another video. This time I'm gonna make a modular 4x4 foot gaming board for skirmish games. And uh, everything on this board is 3D printed from a Kickstarter by 3D layered scenery. It's called Ankroberg. It's a medieval uh, port. Uh, and all these K pieces and houses and bridges are from that Kickstarter. And I was given the job to test print everything and to make this board for the project. It's a really fun project. So after printing everything on my FDM printers for a few weeks I just started laying out the board and gluing everything together. Using super glue to uh, glue the dock parts together and uh, just making sure to have them uh, aligned well and I'm using polystyrene uh, to fill out the landforms uh, next to the cape pieces because there are floor pieces for this Kickstarter and you can use connectors to get them all together and you can disassemble and assemble it as you want but uh, for this board I wanted it to be attached and everything glued together and filled out so I used some polyurethane glue here to glue down the uh, K pieces uh, the dock parts and also the polystyrene and the reason I'm using polystyrene is just to save some plastic here because uh, I lowered the floor parts in Cura, the software you use to make the 3D printing files. And I just lowered them and made them a few millimeters thick. So uh, using polystyrene below this is a lot cheaper and uh, yeah, it works fine. And the polyurethane glue uh, has to be activated with water, so I'm just misting a little bit of water on the pieces I glued down. Uh, and they stick like uh, they should. So uh, uh, after doing this, I kind of filled out some of the gaps between them with filler, but they look really good and, and the seams are barely visible. So uh, it creates a really nice cobbled uh, floor here. I used some uh, rapid wall filler here to uh, fill out the gaps between the polystyrene and the floor pieces. Uh, it's really fast drying uh, filler that works fine. And I used some white wall paint just to seal the uh, styrofoam before spraying because spray paint eats the styrofoam. And uh, as you can see here also there are some parts that have some cellars that you can have your miniatures walk underground. It's really nice detail. Um, after sealing the styrofoam, I just spray painted everything uh, as a primer. I used some Mechanica Standard Grey Spray from uh, Games Workshop, it's my go-to stone color that I uh, used on all the uh, cobblestone and K pieces here. Uh, and uh, it creates a good base to work from. And uh, for the wooden docks, I used some Army Painter Leather Brown Spray, it's a nice base for wood. And for the water, it's uh, Angel Green by Army Painter. Uh, the water will be a little bit more turquoise later on, but uh, it's a good base to have green and creates kind of a, the overspray creates kind of an algae color on the stone. And the buildings were also spray painted black for the roofs and leather brown for the wood and uh, gray for the stone parts. And after spray painting, I'm touching up all the little parts where, where I can't really be uh, thorough with the spray cans and I'm using uh, some um, uh, airbrush color here it's uh, really uh, good coverage and it flows easily so I'm using that instead of craft paint or uh, normal miniature paint you can use what you want but this is uh, really easy and it covers in one go so that's my go-to uh, paint for for terrain pieces just be neat here and try to just do it as neat as you can and uh, sometimes they use an airbrush for this but using a normal brush is just a little bit more accurate so and it's almost as fast and I don't have to clean the airbrush which I hate so this is this is good way to paint the train and yeah just pick out all the details so this is the board after just priming and touching up stuff and uh, this is how the layout is gonna be uh, when finished so after this I washed everything, uh, both the boards and the buildings with some uh, uh, homemade uh, acrylic wash that I make from craft paints from Liquitex. I'm using brown and black and water and just mixing that to a thin wash and this 
slapping it on with a big brush over everything. Uh, it, it works good for the water, it works good for the wood and the stone parts. It's just you don't have to use different colored washes if you don't want to on terrain pieces. Of course painting miniatures is another story but this works fine. I'm just wiping it off with a kitchen towel afterwards. Everything is dry brushed uh, first with a beige color uh, and then with some white and uh, this brings everything together. You heard me say this a million times before but it works just fine on top of everything. So I'm using a Citadel uh, terrain brush here and I'm just dry brushing the boards and all the buildings and all the bridges and all the props, everything with the same colors. And uh, yeah, it looks really good. You can use washes to tint stuff afterwards if you want to have different hues. But this kind of looks really good and looks natural and nice. And it's very, very easy. After dry brushing, I'm using some pigments here. Weathering pigment powder that I'm just brushing on uh, with an old brush. All over the stone parts and the cracks where dust and dirt would settle. And uh, yeah, just uh, moving along old pieces just uh, where it touches the ground where you have cracks and where you have stuff like that it's a it's a mix between a kind of a rusty and a dark brown pigment here and I'm using all kinds of different colors uh, for different goals and using some green uh, also on, on the buildings to create some kind of algae and mossy feeling and this is there's no science to this just do as you feel and just go over thing and, and sprinkle it on and like brush it out and blow it and and after I'm done I'm just sealing it with some varnish spray here and that kind of takes away some of the color uh, but that's fine you can just add more and another layer of spray varnish so that's good and this was done on, on, on the boards and the building so just uh, creating kind of a dirty worn look that that's really nice on, on train pieces especially tying these big boards together with the train and uh, yeah it looks nice and it's really easy so I really recommend you getting these uh, pots of pigment powder and going nuts it's really good for miniatures also and it's not that expensive and they last a long time so just get a few pots of them highly recommend it uh, after the pigment powder uh, and the varnish is dry, just kind of go over the thing with the dry brushing again to, to tie it together. And this is how it looks when everything is uh, weathered and painted. But I'm not done yet. Um, there's a lot more to do to get this looking really good. And uh, the first step after doing this is kind of getting the water to look nice and uh, the roofs are very boring looking uh, just gray black. I wanted to add some color into this. So the next step here is uh, getting some blue craft paint and water and making a wash. And as you can see here I'm just washing this all over the black and the dry brushed areas here and that that does it. That makes it look like kind of a blue uh, shingle uh, roof. And uh, the same wash is used here to get the green of the board, the water parts, to become a little bit more turquoise. I did this in several wash layers and it creates a nice uh, ocean feel to it. And uh, again, don't overdo it. Do thin layers, a few at a time, and then check how it looks and then do another if it's not good enough. Just don't paint too much at once. <laughs> so this is the part where I'm picking out the airbrush and uh, doing some uh, shading and weathering between parts because uh, here the water and the dock parts have to be separated so uh, I'm, I'm using green paint here to get uh, the kind of nautical look here uh, everything is like covered in algae and, and moss and stuff like that so this is really good for for getting that overgrown look that both the K parts, the docks and the, the houses have and this kind of brings everything together also. And uh, here I mixed some PVA glue of water and uh, some green flock uh, that I am making into like sludge, uh, algae sludge that has been gathering uh, along the docks. Um, it looks white here because the PVA glue 
is white before drying but this was still dry transparent and create kind of a green sludgy feel to it and uh, just apply that wherever you think that like algae and plants would collect and uh, I sprinkled leaves uh, dead leaves uh, along the docks and and on the uh, in in the sludge too to represent kind of yeah dirt and leaves falling everywhere after that I used some gloss varnish and I brushed it on uh, to create the water effects um, I've been using uh, two-part resin before to create kind of a deeper uh, water but this time I wanted to try another uh, way of doing it so I just painted on the depth of the water with the shades and then I used this uh, normal wood varnish uh, very glossy and I brushed it on and I did this uh, and multiple layers a lot of layers just be sure to make them dry before you do another layer and it creates a really hard finish and it's super gloss and it looks a lot like water still water um, sometimes I do ripples uh, with some medium uh, to create kind of a windy uh, water look but uh, since I'm gonna be putting ships and stuff on this I, I just want it to be still um, I used this uh, sludge here uh, to create moss on top of the roofs. Uh, I do this mostly where where the roofs uh, connect with the walls and where there are cracks of kind of growth would gather. So just slapping it on when it looks good and letting it dry and then painting on some more if, if it's not enough. But it looks really good and it, it fits nicely with the green airbrushed color that I added before. So. This creates kind of an old, worn look even more. And lastly, I'm putting uh, lots of grass tufts and moss tufts all over the buildings and along the edges of the docks and, and on the wooden docks too, just to create some additional detail that really sells this old, overgrown look that I like so much. And here you have the finished result. Um, I think it looks really nice. It looks like a old medieval fantasy port. And it's perfect for games like Frostgrave or Mordheim or whatever you like. But it, uh, I think it looks great in the end. And I hope you like it too.